Now, the early morning stock market rally, it fizzled. But my next guest believes that markets will still do well and that the economy continues to grow, if slowly. Stephen Wood is the chief market strategist at Russell Investments, the firm helping to manage about $155 billion. Not small change. Stephen Wood, good to have you with nice us. Nice to see you, my friend. All right, so you've been traveling around the world. Yes. What's the sort of feeling, the zeitgeist for investors right now? Are people concerned about the direction of the stock market? I, I think they are because there, there's a lot of headline risk. You know, it started most, you know, uh, significantly, I think, with, you know, the, the tsunami and, and the, the nuclear situation in Japan. But there's a lot of headline risk in the market. And you got to kind of counterbalance that with the data that you're seeing, which are kind of uh, an ugly, sloppy grind upward that we've been seeing for about the last year and a half plus. So, I mean, our job as long-term investors is to kind of wipe away the headline risk and kind of dig into the fundamentals as best we can. But there's still cautious hope, I think, would be a good way to When you say it. headline risk, you're talking about, you know, big news items that get everybody excited in some kind of 24-hour exactly. news cycle, exactly. like the crisis in Europe, mm -hmm. or indeed, if you're talking about the debt ceiling in the United States, then you've got to, what, dig a little bit deeper and determine whether we're going to see corporate profits grow. For, yeah, exactly. For example, uh, we're looking at the, the Japanese earthquake. Now, the supply chain uh, consequences could be rather significant for specific companies, uh, and the impact on the Japanese economy it threw it into a recession again but the impact on the global economy and the United States economy was going to be rather more muted than that so we are kind of looking and seeing those natural disaster impacts they tend to be hiccups and then they move through the system they don't tend to be game changers all right so what industry sectors would you be allocating capital to right now I, I think right now well we, we like uh, some areas of the consumer in the United States we're looking at consumer uh, discretionary stocks? Consumer discretionary stocks yes okay. there are some names in there got to do your homework and if you're willing to do a lot of homework in financial names uh, there are some names that we like there. We're kind of a... Uh, big banks? Uh, b bigger banks, you know, dividend-paying stocks, you know, well-capitalized firms uh, with, with a multi-regional and perhaps an international uh, uh, exposure. And there, a lot of that deposit-driven stable income is something that you want to look at. Uh, and I think also uh, health care right now to kind of even out some of this volatility in, in the shorter term. And we're kind of trimming back a little bit over the last couple of months on energy names. They'd run extremely well for a couple of years, especially in the last six months, so we took a little profit there. Well, right about, right about market. There. Well, and you even saw today the news from El Paso talking about how they're going to split their natural gas pipeline company away from their exploration unit. So you, all right, so consumer discretionary, yeah. mm -hmm. health care, and some financial some stocks. Financial I don't hear anything having to do with commodities. When you yeah. hear a report from Goldman Sachs and then we say, all right, commodities rise because of the Goldman Sachs report, mm -hmm. does Goldman really have that kind of power in the marketplace? It appears short term that they did today. Uh, if you can attribute it to one of a couple things, but you also had housing number out there. You've got this ongoing European uh, crisis, and you and I have been talking about this for a year. We're going to be talking about it next year. We'll be talking about it. 2013. Europe is a story that is not going anywhere anytime soon. But does that, but does that mean that you shouldn't invest in European companies, or maybe take advantage of the sell-off in Europe and look for those global European companies that are going to continue to perform well? A excellent point. Like Germany's doing great. Germany's yeah. actually doing too well for their interest rate environment. Right, export, juggernaut. Export. And, and, and most of Germans, uh, Germany's exports are within Europe, so they like that euro being in every country, so the other countries can still afford German products. So their German company, Germany logged their best GDP growth in 20 years last year. They're going to slow down a little bit. There's still a lot of great names there. Manufacturing in the United States, uh, exporters in the United States. So if you've got a globally diversified portfolio, ride out some of this volatility. Uh, um, commodities, we're not all that positive on. We haven't been for the bulk of this year. Emerging markets are also going to face challenges in 2011, but China and emerging markets could be setting themselves up for a better 2012 or 2013. Why not China? Uh, because they've been hitting the brakes really, really hard for well over a year and a half. China is aggressively trying to slow down their economy. They've got a very big inflation problem in China. So in the shorter term, they're doing their best to slow things down and to get earnings and lending to contract, to control inflation. But in 2012, 2013, that could set up a good opportunity. All right. Looking forward to it. All right. We're going to see you much more before then. I want to thank you very much. Stephen Wood joining us from Russell Investments.